The Sense 75 has dropped new flagship board. This is a 75% layout with a rotary knob nearly identical to the GMMK Pro or the Keychron Q1. I get why from a financial standpoint. It's an accessible layout. You still get the dedicated arrows and the function roll, but we've just seen this layout so much by now that it's pretty tough to get stoked about this. I had to think pretty hard about how to frame this review today. I'm not going to be speaking directly to the enthusiasts because if you know keyboards and you know the market, I trust you're going to be able to draw your own conclusions here. I want to speak to the casual or mechanical curious because if you're coming into the space right now and looking at customs, the first thing you're probably going to encounter is marketing from either Glorious or Drop. My first gateway keyboard into custom mechanicals was a Drop Alt. And full disclosure, I do have an affiliate link with Drop and I have for a really long time, but I would think that by now people realize I'm going to say what I'm going to say about a product regardless. It would be easy and probably pretty funny for me to just roast this keyboard, but I don't feel like that's particularly helpful to a newcomer. It can also come off as like pretty gatekeepy or elitist. And I really want the criticism here today to be helpful and constructive, not just for the potential buyer, but for Drop itself. Because this isn't really available yet. This is in pre-sale with an estimated ship of November 15th through about two and a half months from the time of this video. There are currently no bare bones options. This is pre-built only. Pricing is $349 for the black finish or $399 for the e-white. That's a pretty big upcharge for e-white coating, and I don't have the white on hand to speak to the quality of the finish. The black I have here today is all right. Feels like it's bead blasted. It doesn't fingerprint. I like that. So price-wise for the black finish, that puts this on par with the G MMK Pro pre-built and miles north of the Q1 pre-built. I should mention right up front too, this is a prototype unit. Normally that goes one of two ways. Either it's so nice I can't believe it's a prototype, or there's a list of things that I hope get corrected before it goes to final production. This is the latter of the two. So what you get for $349 is an aluminum case with full per-key RGB and underglow. The plate here is aluminum. The weight with hard finger quotes is a decorative aluminum plate that they'll have different options for at a later time. The fit isn't entirely flush. It does look pretty good, but it's purely a in fact, the weight of the board is only 1.4 kilos or three pounds fully built out, noticeably lighter than the other two mainstream 75s. The aluminum plate is brushed in that same blue anodizing. Looks nice. It's got flex cuts. I'm not sure why. They don't seem to be doing much. You have a single USB-C connection, left side, little recess, and the RGB diffuser is visible around the board. Included switches are Drop Zone Holy Panda X tactiles. These are in stock form, which appear to have very minimal factory lubing, 60 gram spring weight. The stem wobble is very minimal on these. Really stable. They feel pretty smooth, but there's a lot of either spring or leaf noise, I would 100% recommend hand lubing these. Filming is not necessary. I'm not a fan of these versus the OG drop pandas because these aren't long pull, meaning the stem is shorter. It goes all the way into the housing when you push it down. As a result, these don't feel or sound as lively as the originals or even the glorious panda. Included caps are drops DCX keycaps. These are basically Cherry GMMK profile at a $100 price point, which you love to see. These are a double shot ABS blend, and I've been remiss in not covering these before because they're actually really good. Nice thickness. Everything is precise. There's no sprue marks and the alpha legends are thinner or cleaner to me versus GMK. Hardcore keyboard nerds will nitpick the spacing on the T character on the text legends, but for everyone else, these represent a really solid alternative to the pricing and the wait times of GMK. I like these. Do be aware that if you order a full set of these, you normally get a contrasting color enter and escape key. And I don't expect that to be included in these kits as you get just enough caps to cover this board. The stabilizers are now PCB mounted. Finally, they call these their phantom stabs and they're decent. They're PCB mount snap-ins. I like that. The factory lube though is basically non-existent, so you'll need a syringe bare minimum. I opted to completely lube mine by hand. And of course, we do have a knob here, Alps Encoder. It may be a special kind of knob according to the marketing, but end of the day, it's just a knob. It handles volume and play pause. My copy also doesn't sit properly. It rubs the side of the case. I hope they correct this before the final. The underglow here is cool. I do wish the diffusion was handled a little better. It's really obvious where each of the LEDs is located and I I don't mean when you're looking right at the diffuser, I mean in the light it throws on the surface, particularly on the front edge of the board where it's the shortest distance to the desk. I do like that if you're totally not into RGB, you can just turn it off and the diffusers aren't visible from any angle on the keyboard so you don't have any weird blank space on the sides of your board. There is per-key RGB here, but these are all south-facing sockets, meaning the LED is on the bottom. Enthusiasts prefer this. Just be aware if you're trying to use keycaps that have backlit legends, they're not going to look great on these because the LED is not right behind it. Even at full brightness, the per-key RGB itself is pretty forgettable here. In terms of rebinding or layers or lighting controls, they state on the website this will be VIA compatible, but at the time of this review, it's not recognized by VIA and they didn't provide me with any kind of JSON file. QMK support for drop boards is normally handled through their own configurator where you build your firmware first and then you have to flash that to the keyboard.
keyboard. It's not exactly a user-friendly experience. We'll have to see on that. Again, at the time of this review, there is no QMK config for this either. So they make a pretty big deal out of the gasket mounting system in this board. It uses a Bisco material instead of Poron. This board doesn't flex. Like the PCB and plate assembly is very firm, but the whole plate does move up and down in the case. You can demonstrate this on camera by pushing with some force in certain places on the board. You don't really feel this bounce in the typing experience. But what you do get is a mildly softer bottom mount when you're pressing down on your keys versus like the unflinching stiffness of the GMMK Pro. You don't really feel it bounce, but it is a lot less fatiguing to use for a full day. So what we're getting here is really thin, it's hollow, there's a lot of resonance going on here, and all the negative aspects of the switches are amplified. I don't think any of them sound great, but you can do the math on this. Side note, my copy of the Q1 is a V1 version and it's heavily modded, so I thought the Q3 would be a more accurate representation of the stock experience there. Inside, we have what feels like EV foam in between the plate and the PCB. In the lower portion, we also have a very thin sheet of EV foam, as well as some other thin foam in here, maybe PE, maybe Poron. I use Zip and Fit here because it's cleaner versus polyfill, but you can use whatever, just discard their included foam. I also have really bad resonance on the top frame. It clangs, similar to like the early Q1 units, so we're gonna fix that the same way. It's called a force break mod. We're gonna use small pieces of masking tape, double stack to prevent that metal from completely making contact with the top. Drop would be smart to find a way to make this happen straight from the factory. When opening this, I did notice that the corner screws use a special Torx bit versus Phillips head for the center screws. I hope that's limited to this copy because your average casual user probably isn't gonna have a bit driver laying around that can handle these. There's also different screws for the standoffs on the plate assembly. I wish they had gone without the standoffs at all to increase flex. For these switches, there's not a lot we can do with these stock. And I love you guys, but I'm not going to spend hours lubing switches I'll never use for anything else. So we'll put some actual Franken switch polar pandas in here, lubed and long pole. After switching out the foam dampening and doing the force break mod, you can definitely hear the difference that proper switches make in this board. I should mention too that the included Panda X switches in here were very hard to get out of the plate. I had to use a lot of force on these and I chewed up the top housings on quite a few of these, so be careful and go slow. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that's a night and day difference from the stock form to what we were able to accomplish with a few mods. So hopefully Drop has time to implement some versions of these sound dampening techniques before this board goes to production. They have reached out to me. They are fully aware that the response to the sound of this board has not been favorable thus far. And they tell me that there's a few different methods they're working on to help that out. Doing the tape mod on the PCB on this is really take it or leave it. It's purely preference. I actually like it more without. I just feel like it has a little more character. So breaking down value, you, I feel like there's some pretty obvious takeaways here. First off, this should definitely be offered in bare bones, and I do think they've announced eventual plans to do that. Yeah, it's just a couple mods, but in its current form, it's a premium price for a not premium experience. If you're the kind of person that just wants to buy a keyboard and start using it, there's no way I could recommend this over the Keychron Q1. Drop can put each one of these components and features on a pedestal individually, but as a whole, it just doesn't come together for a great experience. It is fair to point out that if you're an early adopter, you can get a carry case, an artisan cap, and a full 
set of MT3 profile caps of your choice, so that may alter the value perception for you. With some tuning for sound, it could be a better out-of-the-box experience than the GMMK Pro. It does feel better to type on for a day of use, and you have underglow. The stock switches and stabilizers are better on the GMMK Pro because Glorious does have their factory lubing down, though I really can't recommend anyone spend $349.99 on their pre-built either. No need to keep beating a dead horse here. It's not an inspired design at this point, but you can get this board where it needs to be if you're willing to put in some work. It has potential, but in its current condition at its current price point, for me, the Sense 75 doesn't make a lot of sense. But what does make sense is maintaining some degree of privacy and security when you're online. And for that, I choose NordVPN. I don't know about you, but I like to stay as anonymous as possible online these days. And NordVPN can give you a little peace of mind by encrypting your network data and tunneling it through a secure VPN. And it's not just for when I'm trying to downplay the amount of time that I, I mean my friend, spends on browsers to those creeps at my I mean my friend's internet service provider. Just one click and you get access to 5,500 plus servers in 59 countries. Choose one close for faster speeds or a completely different country to get content that you can't access from your home country. Since things have finally opened up after basically living in a cave for the past two years, NordVPN not only protects me when I'm sitting at my desk, but also on my mobile device when I'm on the train or any crowded public place. You can protect up to six devices on every major platform, including Android TV. Go to nordvpn.com slash badseedtech to get a two-year plan plus four additional months at a huge discount and it's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Big thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video and thank you so much for your time. Coming up soon, we still have the SteelSeries Nova 7 to take a look at versus the Pro and Corsair's latest offering and I'm almost ready to start talking about IEMs. That's it for today. I will catch you all in the next one. Stay up.